What is up guys and welcome to our progress patch for October 2023. Um, the intention behind these little update patches is simply so that I can still stay um, in contact with my subscriber base as small as it is. I think it's like 60 people now. Thank you to everybody who subscribed by the way. Um, to those of you who have not, please consider. Um, the goal is to perhaps get to 100 before January, so who knows. Um, but for this segment, obviously, we will be focusing on the English Premier League. Um, if you enjoy the content, like I said, please don't forget, like the video, um, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those notification bells. Without any further ado, let us get into it. Okay, so part one of the segment will be covering the fact that North London is currently leading the way for us in the Premier League. Spurs are at the top courtesy of fantastic performances from Son Yun Min and James Madison. The dynamic duo have brought a new cutting edge to the Lily Whites. No Kane, no problem. Um, right now, the Premier League seems to be the priority at Spurs, which is understandable because they're not competing in any European competition right now. So no Champions League, no Europa League and no Conference League. Um, and I think right now their standout performance could be, I, I would say, um, the one against Liverpool. Now, a lot of people have been calling for it to be replayed because they were not happy with the result. But I think at the end of the day, you need a bit of luck um, to be at the top of a, of a log. And, and right now, Spurs are at the top with 20 points out of a possible 24. Um, and luck seems to be heavily on their side at times. So, well done to Spurs. Next up, we got to focus on the other half of North London. In second place, also on 20 points, an identical record to Spurs, is Arsenal. Um, close behind the Lily Whites, as I said, with an equal record. I would say that Arsenal this season have much better squad depth. They have replacements for everybody in um, at, at the squad. Um, in particular, the goalkeeper, I think, you know, I sort of looked at Arsenal and in all of my prediction videos, or most of them, I speak about Aaron Ramsdale, but I've sort of overlooked Raya as a goalkeeper um, and he performed fantastically well um, for them in their most recent match against Manchester City, which the Gunners came out as 1-0 victors. Um, Arsenal are competing on multiple fronts this season, um, but it seems like, you know, um, they know that they've got enough squad depths to... Uh, have a long-lasting title challenge both in the Premier League um, and in the Champions League. I think it's for that reason that Arteta sort of sacrificed uh, the match against Lens in the Champions League so that he could prioritize the fixture against Manchester City. Um, I would say Arsenal's greatest strength right now is their ability to switch between tactics so smoothly, playing possession or counter-attack doesn't matter. Um, and I would say that their standout fixture is probably... Um, what I would say is the community shield against Manchester City because it had been 12 matches since Arsenal had last beaten Manchester City um, and it looked like already they were they were underdogs in that fixture which is shocking to say considering how well they were last season um, but Arsenal managed to claw their way back into that match even if it was fortuitous um, through an own goal from Manchester City as I said for Spurs you need a bit of luck um, to push yourself over the edge of the line sometimes and luck seems to be on Arsenal's side whenever they come up against this City side that has been such a thorn in their side for so many seasons. Next up, Manchester, looking a bit on the sloppy side, I would say. We start off with Manchester City. City are missing crucial players, obviously following the departure of Ilkay Gundogan and Riyad Mahrez, but also the injury of Kevin De Bruyne. City look kind of one-dimensional and predictable right now. Um, there's a lot of talk about Erling Haaland being off form, um, but you, you still have to acknowledge the fact that he's the Premier League's top goal scorer, and obviously that is for a reason. Um, Julian Alvarez as well has been doing fantastically well for the Citizens. The Citizens find themselves third in the Premier League this season, just two points behind those two clubs above them. So it's still very tight up top. Um, I think Pep Guardiola is experimenting here and there, so that is fine as well. Um, it's still very hopeful for City on all fronts. They're firing on all cylinders in the Champions League. Um, and I think for them so far, I think the standout fixture is actually um, the Premier League fixture that they had last weekend against Arsenal, um, where City kind of looked flat at times, obviously showing that um, 
certain players need to step up and, and do just a little bit more because there's too much responsibility placed on Haaland right now. Um, and it's obvious that they're still very reliant on De Bruyne, even though he's not there. And then we look at the red half of Manchester in 10th place on just 12 points. Manchester United have looked disjointed. They're looking more like 11 individuals as opposed to an actual team. Um, of the of the field politics have overshadowed any um, positives on the field right now. Um, scandals like the Mason Greenwood saga, the Anthony saga, um, the drama with Jaden Sancho and the so-called rebellion at Old Trafford. Um, and then obviously you've got to look at Onana being very, very disappointing this season as well. Obviously brought in um, to replace one departing David De Gea and Onana just has not looked up to speed. Um, there are some positives for the Red Devils so far. Rasmus Hoyland and Garnacho are looking very, very good so far. Um, Hoyland in particular, you know, in the Champions League has looked quite good. Um, and I think the standout fixture for Manchester United this season is unfortunately that 4-3 defeat to Bayern Munich because it displayed exactly what the problem with Manchester United is right now. It's a team that can go forward and score three goals but then concedes four goals. Um, it's just not balanced right now. Usually you look at teams and it's a case of we sacrifice defense so that we can overextend up front. But with United, it's a case of no matter how much they put up front, they're still lacking at the back. Okay, and now we talk about the final part of this video being the return or resurgence of some old rivals. We start off with Liverpool, who are looking revitalized and quite strong this season. Um, they're in fourth with 17 points, also very, very close to their top spot. Um, I think last season was very difficult for the, for the Reds because obviously Salah wasn't around. And then you had players like Diego Jota and um, Darwin Nunes who had to just come in and fit into a kind of system that was tailored to Mohamed Salah and his strengths without him even being there. Now they have the opportunity to play together, to build some chemistry. It's looking very good for, for Liverpool so far. McAllister has come in and sort of provided some stability in their midfield as well, allowing them to play through the centre as opposed to just focusing on just attack and defence. Um, it also allows Virgil van Dijk to look so much better at the back because last season he looked exposed so often. Um, I think the standout fixture for Liverpool is probably the 2-1 victory away at Newcastle. Um, I think that really just showed that um, Liverpool are back in it to take on teams that are or, or supposedly were better than them last season. It's easy to go out and win against the likes of Luton Town and Burnley. But can you win against teams who performed better than you last season? And Liverpool proved that they can. Next up, I want to talk Chelsea, who are sitting also bottom half of the log uh, with just 11 points. Expensive signings and heavy investment in the transfer market obviously needs to be tempered with patience from Chelsea fans. Mauricio Poch Pochettino is not the kind of coach who comes in and gets you instant results. Much of what's happening at Spurs right now could be attributed to him. Um... But you got to remember, um, Chelsea right now are also not in any European competition. So for them, I think right now the priority is probably, um, I would say, qualifying for the Europa League. I think they're still thinking that they're in the running for the title because, I mean, they're just like, what, nine points away from the top, which just, again, goes to show how close things are this season. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, I think Europa League is, is the main priority right now. Um, and in two seasons, you could look at Chelsea being back in the Champions League and then competing for the title. Um, their standout fixture, I say, or I would say, would be that 4-1 um, that victory away at Burnley because it just goes to show that when Chelsea want to play well, they can play well. Um, but they, they're just lacking a bit of confidence. And I think that fixture is actually going to be the turning point for the Blues this season. And lastly, I want to touch on Newcastle now. I'm very sorry, I would like to apologize to Newcastle. I looked at them in the Champions League and in the group that they're in with Borussia Dortmund, AC Milan and PSG and I said immediately that they would no longer be in Europe, they would finish last. They're leading that group with four points following a 4-1 demolition against PSG. Right now Newcastle are looking tactically strong, um, the players are all just enjoying themselves and their football, there's no pressure. You know, when you look at a team like City or Arsenal, um, the big boys, um, there's always pressure to win as many trophies as possible. 
But then you look at Newcastle and they're kind of having the same um, mentality as Leicester did in, in 2015 when they won the Premier League. Where we're just out here to have fun and to enjoy ourselves. Um, and players like Alexander Isak with all of those goals, I think he's second on the top scorer list. Um, and then Kieran Trippier um, providing creativity out wide from right back, being one of the assist leaders as well. Just goes to show that Newcastle just want to go out there and have fun. If you're looking for a club to watch where there's no pressure and it's just players enjoying themselves, Newcastle is definitely the one to be watching. I think their standout fixture is without a doubt that demolition against PSG. Um, not just keeping PSG quiet, but putting four goals past PSG, knowing that PSG are not just the favourites in the group, but one of the favourites in the Champions League with the squad that they have. Um, and Newcastle just went out and gave them the humbling of their season so far. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, we really appreciate the watch time. Um, and the fact that you took some time out of your day to spend it with us talking about the sport that we all love. Um, if you enjoyed the content, why not, you know, drop a like down below or comment in the comment section. Um, maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. And I mean, while you are here right now, have a look at some of our old videos too. Um, they should be appearing on the screen right now, along with that subscribe button. So you know exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and have a great day out there and we hope to see you again very, very soon. Thanks. Stay safe.